Thank you for joining me. I'm Scott Ryan. Well, as you all know, Obama went to Connecticut yesterday to exploit the tragedy, the, sh the school shooting. And I'm particularly not impressed at his quoting of scriptures. I mean, it's just amazing how this godless man comes in at times like this, does some fake crying, wiping tears that don't exist, away from his eyes, and, and quotes scriptures and utilizes this as some public relations piece for himself to further bamboozle people into thinking that he's not happy about what happened. And pardon me for being frank, I don't care how outrageous it may sound. I have no doubt in my mind that Obama, Pelosi, Harry Reid, and many of the leading Democrats are gleeful inside when these things happen. I don't believe that they care about people because Marxists, the Marxists they are, they do not look at people as individuals with individual value created by God. They look at us as the scaffold as Nietzsche said, Nietzsche said that we are the scaffold, the masses are the scaffold, who exist solely to prop them up so that they can realize their de special destiny and rule over us. These people had no value, they have no value to Barack Hussein Obama or Nancy Pelosi or Harry Reid. It is purely theatric theatrical when they go to these uh, crime scenes and act emotional. I mean, the, the fake crying was really appalling that Obama tried to perform the other night. Uh, there, there were no tears. He was rubbing his eyes and it, quoting scriptures. I'm not impressed that Obama knows some scriptures. He always uses them in a, in a generic way, takes them out of context to serve his benefit. I mean, why am I... I Satan knows the scriptures extremely well. What does that tell you? This dude is evil incarnate. He is a sheep in wolf's clothing. I have no doubt in my mind when these tragedies happen, I, if they could manage to cause these tragedies to happen, I have no reservation about saying I believe that they would. I mean, there, there's actually uh, a one clip that came to mind. I remember after the shooting of uh, Trayvon Martin, the, the Zimmerman Martin case, there was a glimpse into the mind of your typical liberal that buttresses what I'm saying. On Fox News, it was... I looked for the, the clip on YouTube, and it's not there. Couldn't find it anywhere on the Internet. But Tamara Holder, a popular liberal uh, lawyer and pundit, was on Sean Hannity's show within the first week after the, that happened. And she was on Hannity debating on a panel. And she said, not once, but twice, while she was passionately making her argument, I'm glad this happened. And then she proceeded to say why. Because it helped to further their liberal agenda. She, she wasn't referring to anything other than when she said, I'm glad this happened. It was, uh, it was unequivocal that she was talking about the fact that Trayvon Martin was shot. She said she's glad it happened, and Hannity tried to walk her back on it. She said it twice. Okay, if you said it once, you could say, well, I didn't really mean it uh, uh, in that way. But when you so cavalierly say that you're glad it happened, I mean, without any reservation, it, it isn't a, I misspoke. It is a... I accidentally revealed my true character, my true view on what's important, and that is bigger government and human beings, their lives are meaningless. They have no meaning other than to support the government, to walk hand in hand, super ape, and support super state. And you can look up, uh, if you Google Tamara Holder, Trayvon Martin, I'm glad this happened. You'll find, as evidence of what I'm talking about, uh, you'll find there were many Twitters where people were appalled as I was and, and tweeted about it. But the video 
is nowhere to be found. I doubt that Fox News would uh, want to upload anything, any evidence of that occurring, even though they're not a liberal network per se. Uh, I think that they would probably be embarrassed by the fact that they actually employ this woman after what she said. Uh, she was saying it as a part of an employee of their network, which is another reason why it's absolutely absurd to call yourself fair and balanced and to force people to watch leftist idiocy to offset the truth as though that is fair and balanced. But that's another story. To them, this is just collateral damage. You know, it may sound heartless to say that they don't care, but it is. It's collateral damage because they're looking at the big picture and their communist utopia, for them to achieve that, their, their tyrannical government for which they have strived for the last hundred years, that's a, the lives of innocents in a school here and there, that's a small price to pay for these sick bastards. That's the whole Marxist philosophy. Religion doesn't enter the equation. Morality doesn't enter the equation. They are the morality in their sick minds. We are at a point right now that makes me digress back to the day after the election when I uploaded a video. And, I'm t and I was talking about the fact that Obama, for the last four, five years, has been doing everything, working diligently to force state secession. Nobody wants to secede. I'm not a secessionist. Neither were our founding fathers. Nobody wanted to secede until they had no other choice because of unabated evil. And I was talking then about the fact that Obama is going to, at some point, emancipate, do an emancipation proclamation of the homosexuals because of all the conflicts with, as this avalanche of homosexual marriage being recognized from state to state. It's really messing up. Uh, you know, when they move into different states that don't recognize marriage, it's changing the tax forms. There's going to be a proclamation where Obama declares them uh, gay marriage as legal, even though he doesn't have constitutional authority to do so, of course. But that's one example of uh, where Obama is going to set that up. He's going to force the hands of force the hands of the states when homosexuals start going into Christian churches and demanding that the pastors marry them. That will be a sin against conscience, a sin against conscience, all across the land, where Christians will be forced to do that or suffer jail time or whatever the penalty might be. When doctors will under Obamacare, be forced to not just prescribe abortion pills, but to perform abortions. We are reaching a pinnacle, a time very quickly, and many of the leading talk radio show hosts are, are still in denial about this because it, it's not good. We're not at the point yet where it's become so mainstream and obvious that they feel that they can comfortably talk about it without losing their advertisers or their sponsors, but we are very rapidly going to reach that point where states are going to have to step up, legislatures are going to have to say no to the federal government. We are not going to bow to your idols. We are not going to allow you to force people to perform, doctors to perform abortions or Christians to perform homosexual marriage. And the next thing that you're going to be seeing is they're going to come for your guns. And if you're in a blue state, you're, good, you're going to have to hand them over or you're going down when that happens because your state is not going to step up. Your state is not going to protect you. Your sovereign state is no longer sovereign. They have sold out. So I would suggest that you hightail out of there and flee Sodom while you still can. But it, we are coming to the point in these red states, as in the blue states, where they're, this usurper is going to, at some point, come after the guns. And it's up to the states to defend their citizenry their constitutional rights. It's happening so rapidly. This guy hasn't even been inaugurated the second. He hasn't had his second inauguration yet. And it looks like it could be weeks away. I don't know if it will be. It might be weeks. It might be months. It's going to happen. You really have to start asking yourself honestly, what am I going to do when they come knocking on my door? It's fun. You know, everybody's talking, uh, you know, quoting Charlton Heston, out of my cool, dead hands. It all sounds good. Yeah, well, what about when they come knocking out of your, at your door?
what are you going to do? I'm not telling anybody what, what they should do, but I'm, I'm telling you that your state, the state in which you live, is the most important thing right now. Aside from, of course, your relationship with God, your salvation, and your family. People, but you better wake up. Things are happening quick. They're going to happen more quickly than you ever thought. You better get your stuff in gear. You better start planning accordingly. There's power in numbers. If you can get, if you can move south to the God-fearing states of America, you better do it. You better think about doing it quickly. Thank you for joining me. I'm Scott Ryan.